here we go. Okay, so input output isolation. Um, the Venable frequency response analyzer that you have has isolated oscillator output and isolated uh, measurement channel inputs. So a non-isolated connection means that uh, the return signal or signal return is connected to the chassis ground or safety ground. So if you had a uh, an instrument, uh, a voltmeter or a power supply, a lab power supply, or uh, an oscilloscope that plugs into the wall, the metal chassis is connected to safety ground. And uh, that means that the, the uh, chassis, the, the outside metal, um, if something, if a high voltage inside the instrument was to come into contact with the chassis, uh, it would be grounded and it would cause a fuse to blow or a circuit breaker to trip and, and not allow the outside of the instrument um, or appliance to become uh, energized. So uh, even at home, um, your microwave oven, your toaster oven, that uh, metal chassis is connected to safety ground. Now, when we talk about uh, an instrument like an oscilloscope or um, a voltmeter that plugs into the wall, the chassis is grounded and the signal return, the black lead is usually connected to the chassis ground. Um, with an isolated input-output connection, the signal ground is not connected to the chassis ground. It's not connected to uh, the safety ground. So we'll talk a little, we'll, we'll actually have a diagram that shows this a little bit better coming up. Um, and then when we talk about isolation, um, there's two types of isolation. Um, there's the common mode and the differential. So when we talk about the common mode isolation, um, this is the isolation barrier that separates um, the signal inputs and, and returns from the chassis or safety ground. So in the case of our FRA, the black lead and the red lead are fully isolated from safety ground. That also means that if something inside the instrument were to short out and a high voltage was uh, allowed to touch the, uh, come into contact with the chassis, we would not see those voltages on the test leads. So when we talk about common mode, um, a, a handy way to think of this is if we connected the, the red lead and the black lead together, um, then uh, any voltage we put on the, the red and black leads uh, relative to the uh, chassis or safety ground is the common mode voltage rating. So if we connected the black and the red leads together, Obviously, there's zero volts between the black and the red lead. But if we were to imagine or, or measure the voltage between the test leads and the chassis, there can be a voltage present. And as long as we don't exceed 600 volts, um, we're OK. So another way to look at this is if we connected the red lead and the black leads to a circuit and the voltages relative to safety ground are less than 600 volts, we will not damage the instrument. Then we also need to talk about the differential voltage rating. Now this is the voltage rating between the red and the black lead. And so now we're talking about uh, much lower voltages that can cause damage. If we put a voltage on the red lead, uh, between the red lead and the black lead, 
it can cause a current to flow into the instrument and back out of the instrument. So it might flow into the red lead, through the instrument, and back out the black lead. Or it might flow into the black lead and then back out the red lead. It doesn't matter. Um, so we have to be careful about the voltage applied between the red and the black lead, uh, the signal and the signal return, so that we don't cause excessive current. So normally when we power up the Venable FRA and start the software, the oscillator output, the generator output is at 50 ohms. That's the default. It also has a low output impedance mode where the output impedance is only two ohms. And on the channel inputs, the default input impedance is one mega ohm and it can be changed to 50 ohms. So this is going to be important here as we'll see momentarily. Um, so the differential voltage rating for the oscillator output or the generator output is 10 volts. Do not put more than 10 volts uh, across the red and the black leads of the oscillator output. Now, if we change the oscillator output impedance to two ohms, we have to be very careful not to exceed two volts. Because if you remember Ohm's law, if we put two volts across two ohms, one amp of current will flow. Now, if we put, uh, if, if the oscillator output is uh, in the default 50 ohm mode, um, and we put 10 volts across it, 200 milliamps will flow, again, Ohm's law. So as long as we don't exceed 200 milliamps of current in the 50 ohm output impedance mode or one amp in the low output two ohm impedance mode, uh, we won't cause any damage. What happens is if too much current flows through the oscillator test leads, excessive heating internal to the instrument occurs, which leads to damage. So here is a, a diagram um, that shows both the isolation and the uh, output impedance of the oscillator. So uh, when we're talking differential, um, we can follow the, the, the path uh, of current into the oscillator and then back out. So this would be uh, the red lead. This would be the black lead. And if we have this switch open here, then the default impedance is 50 ohms. If we put 10 volts across the red and the black lead, that causes a current to flow through that 50 ohm output impedance that comes back out the black lead. So as long as that current doesn't exceed 200 milliamps, we do not cause excessive heating and subsequent damage to the output of the oscillator. Now, when we switch through the software, we switch the oscillator output to the low impedance mode. Now this two ohm output impedance is the current path. So if we put a voltage across the red and the black leads, the current will flow into the red lead through that two ohm output impedance and back out the black lead. And if we exceed two volts, then more than an amp will flow through this output impedance, cause excessive heating and subsequent damage. So uh, and again, the current, if, if you reverse the voltage, it has the same effect. You can have minus 2 volts or minus 10 volts, however you want to sense it. 
current could flow in the black lead and then back out the red lead. But again, either through a 50 ohm output impedance or through the two ohm output impedance. And this is the differential mode. And this is where we have to be careful with the voltages applied between the red and the black leads. Now, if we go back to the common mode, where for the sake of simplicity, we connect the red and the black leads together so there's zero volts between them. So there's no differential voltage between the red and the black leads. We can start taking a look at the common mode voltage. So as long as the red and black lead voltage does not exceed 600 volts, we do not break down this isolation barrier. Now, this is very interesting to note here. We see the floating ground, and it's depicted as the ground symbol with the dashed lines. This is the same ground as the black lead. So that is the signal return, but it is different and separate from the earth ground, which is represented by the solid triangle. The earth ground is also known as the safety ground. This is the ground that is connected to the chassis of the instrument and is connected to the green wire on the power cord that goes to the safety ground on the uh, plug or the wall outlet. So as long as this entire circuit does not go 600 volts above the earth ground, then the isolation barrier is maintained. If we exceed 600 volts on both of these leads, relative to earth ground, we can break down this isolation barrier and cause damage. Now, if we, if we look at the channel input voltage ratings, it's a very similar kind of effect. We don't want to put more than 10 volts between the red and the black leads on the measurement channels. Um, if we, this this in the case where the uh, output impedance is set to 50 ohms, um, more than 200 milliamps can cause excessive current, which will cause heating and result in damage. So let's take a look at uh, the diagram for the input channel. Now, the default output impedance for the input channel is one mega ohm. Now, this is a very large resistance and will limit uh, the current. So we can apply up to 500 volts between the red and the black leads, and very little current will flow through the one mega ohm uh, input impedance and back out to the, the black lead. So it, you're, you're, it, it's, it's very, when, when the input impedance is set to one mega ohm, which is the default, it's very hard to damage the uh, input due to heating. But if we switch through software, the input impedance to 50 ohms, that's not a very large resistance and it can allow quite a bit of current to flow. And you can see where if we put 500 volts on 50 ohms, we're going to have maybe like 10 amps flowing through there. And that would definitely let the smoke out. We don't want to do that. So when this is in the 50 ohm input impedance mode, we want to limit the voltage between the red and the black leads to 10 volts. And again, when we talk about the common mode input voltage rating, think of the red and the black leads being connected together. So there's zero volts differentially. 
between the red and the black leads. And then we can apply up to 600 volts to the red and the black leads relative to earth ground or chassis ground without causing any damage. This is, this is very similar to the uh, oscillator output rating, or it's, it's the same as the oscillator output rating actually. Um, but again, if we look at the ground symbol here and the ground symbol here, this is the signal return or the signal ground, which is isolated from the earth ground. So once again, here are the voltage ratings and there are different voltage ratings for different impedances because if we change the impedance without changing the voltage rating, then we get excessive current. So uh, this is the, these, these are the, the critical factors is not to put too much voltage between the red and the black leads. Um, that's the, the most common way that, that uh, damage can occur by excessive current. Um, when you uh, power on your FRA and start the software, the default output impedance of the oscillator is 50 ohms, and the default input impedance is one mega ohm. So it comes up in the safest or, or the highest impedance uh, option available. If you do change the impedance of the oscillator output or the channel inputs, the software will warn you. A little box pops up and says, warning, um, be careful not to cause excessive current by reducing the oscillator output impedance to two ohms or reducing the uh, input channel uh, impedance to 50 ohms. Um, are there any questions at this point? No, I think it's clear that part. Yeah. So if you do have questions, uh, you can contact myself, um, email, or, or you can give me a call. Uh, as well as Mike Gray, uh, senior staff engineer, who's on this conference call. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put this presentation in a PDF, and we'll, we'll email it to Ricardo, and he can share it with you. If you have questions later on down the line, don't hesitate to email or call either myself or Mike.